Many of these seafarers didn't get to go home for Christmas. Ironically, most of what was consumed throughout the holiday season relied largely on their work at sea. Dial this number. This one? Yes, if you want to activate internet. Young Episcopalian Will Bryant also didn't go home this Christmas. Coming from the Diocese of Western North Carolina, Will has decided to spend a year as a missionary, a young adult service corps volunteer working with the Mission to Seafarers in Hong Kong. Every day he visits the seafarers, bringing them the latest news in their own language, phone cards so they can call home, and a welcome respite from their sometimes dangerous and often lonely lifestyle. 90% of all the world's trade comes through shipping, but when you factor in different parts coming in from all over the world and then those items are shipped out, it's more like 95%. It's, a, it's an industry that touches everyone, whether or not they realize it. It's a hidden industry. I had no idea before I came here um, just how involved my life was because of it, you know, it's how many lives it touches. Today, Will plans to head out to the Anchorage with the mission's senior chaplain, the Reverend Stephen Miller. Kellett, okay, well let's put that on his first call. So we'll go Kellett and then head out to North Lama. We make our decisions based on which ships we've already been to and then which ships are in, in the location, which, which are most economical to visit. Sweet. Let's go. In terms of world trade, uh, everything really depends upon ships and the people that drive them, the seafarers, the engineers and the, and the deck crew. So working with those people who give up eight months to ten months of every year working at sea so that they can feed their families at home um, really respects their, their situation of the sacrifice that they give. So the mission, why we care for them is because if we don't care for them and it all goes wrong, then ultimately the world's commodities dry up. Hong Kong is just one of 260 ports throughout the world where Mission to Seafarers has a presence. Established in 1856, it's one of the oldest Anglican mission agencies, bringing much needed support to those at sea. So uh, here's all of our news, Korean newspaper, Chinese newspaper, Filipino newspaper, and then we also bring football DVDs, boxing DVDs, just anything to make them feel a little bit more at home. This is one of the ships that comes every four days, the Taipan, everyone is Sri Lankan, Ukrainian crew, very friendly. Um, this is like the ship that I've made the most uh, connections with. This is a good ship to visit. Hello. <laughs> hello. Yeah, hello. Hello. After 12 o'clock, I go. Ah, okay. Good to see you again. And then I have the SIM card for uh, the nano SIM. Yeah, yeah. It's inside. Thank you it's very much. Yeah, it's ready to go. It's cargo containers. We have. Coming here and seeing these people, the depths of loneliness, just the worst kinds of loneliness, that has just made me be so much more thankful for what I have. It's put everything in perspective. These aren't real problems, what I have. These people are the ones that have problems. They don't get to see their families. I met, I met a guy last week, didn't get to see the birth of his child two months ago. It's just definitely changed my perspective on the world, on what really problems are, like what, what is a problem, and what is a, a inconvenience, you know? It's changed, completely changed that. You have so many crew, you want It's opened my eyes, really, having Will here, and that obviously, introducing Will to the shipping world. I think it's been quite exciting and what to watch his eyes be open to, you know, how, how shipping plays a vital part in the world's economy. Uh, it's been quite good, I think, for us to listen to his experience and his views of, you know, how he's found some things interesting or strange or 
or fascinating, which after a few years here I might have taken for granted. And so it's good to, you know, we both have had our eyes opened in that respect. Take one of those. Take a South China Morning Post. It's been beneficial to me, of course, because I've got enough, not just another pair of hands, but someone else I can trust. Think we'll be going up on this one just because they don't want to lower the line but we'll, we'll send a little plastic bag full of newspapers dvds just send it up instead of going on board 60 60 60 60 uh 6 6 60 us dollars yes all right okay Sometimes you can feel like a phone card salesman because that's what I mean, we sell a lot of phone cards sometimes. But it's the only way they can contact their families, so it's it's a bit deeper than just being a phone card salesman. This is the only way they have to call home. They spend about seventy percent of their lives at sea, and you know, think about how many birthdays they miss, how many Christmases, how many how many holidays. So they're very lonely, and um, and how much they earn. It depends. Able-bodied seamen will earn about a thousand, twelve hundred dollars a month. But then, once you get going, once you get up in the ranks, engineers, chief mates, about two thousand, three thousand per month. So, just really good money, and you know, in the Philippines, uh, in India. So they make good money, but is again, is it worth it? You know, you miss half of your, you know, a little bit more than half of your child's life, or. You know, anniversaries. This opportunity offers you a chance to not only pursue your faith, not only learn more about yourself spiritually, about other communities, about um, other faith communities, but also allows you to learn about other parts of the world, learn another language, um, and do so on a budget. I wanted to um, grow deeper in my faith. I've been out of school working for the past like, two years, and I felt I was growing away from my faith. So um, I saw Yask as a way to, to bridge that gap and take a risk, take a, take a leap of faith. And now I'm here. After half a day at sea, Will and Stephen have an important visit to make back on land. Some of these guys, they get their appendix out and they get an infection and then they're in a hospital by themselves in a country where they don't speak the language. And uh, you know, Stephen and I will go visit. There's nothing worse in hospital than a visiting time. Everybody else gets a visit, but you don't. It means a lot to them. They're really the only people that care about them in this foreign country. For Episcopal News Service, I'm Matthew Davis.